These 15 actresses are currently suffering, and we're going to talk about them all, beginning with Shannon Doherty, who has long been doing poorly. Let me explain to you why. You see, this little house on the prairie and charmed actress began tackling the big C and was first diagnosed with breast cancer in March 2015. Aggressive treatment that included a unilateral mastectomy, radiotherapy, and chemotherapy was performed, and by April 2017, the cancer was in remission. All's well that ends well, right? So we thought, too, except that the cancer returned in 2019, and this time it's in stage 4 phase. That means its spread through the body is too pervasive, and all that can be done is to prolong survival times and improve life quality. Shannon recently celebrated her 52nd birthday, has always made an effort to stay positive, and has repeatedly said that she intends to fight all the way. According to her, I try to treasure all the small moments that most people don't really see or take for granted. The small things are magnified for me. We have this endless well within us, and it's just about continuing to dig in that well for the strength to face adversity, and so that we can also see all the beauty. If you're fortunate enough to come across this courageous lady, say a prayer for her and wish her well. Thoughts and prayers are something we feel like offering the likes of Tia Mowry and Selma Blair coming up in the video, but not Alison Mack, and this is why. Alison Mack is serving a three-year stretch and should be out soon. She's been in a variety of movies, TV shows, and web series, but is mostly famous for playing Chloe Sullivan in Smallville. Now, Alison Mack, like quite a few others in Tinseltown, had sizable self-confidence issues. She thought she was not as good as she should be and was on the lookout for someone or something that would make her a great star. It was this search for unobtainium that landed her in big trouble. In 2006, she joined a multi-level marketing firm known as Nexium, with the founder having promised her to give what was most dear to her heart. Nexium was actually a depraved sex cult, and Alison Mack was fully on board with that. In 2015, was made deputy head of a subgroup and tasked with finding nubile girls for Nexium's founder. These ladies were starved, branded, tortured, punished for ludicrous offenses, and forced to give up material that would be used to blackmail them if they ever dared step out of line. The FBI showed up and arrested Allison Mack in 2018. To save her skin, she turned snitch, and her testimony was enough to get Nexium's founder a 120-year prison sentence. Allison Mack, on the other hand, got three years and is languishing behind bars, just like two more actresses coming up later in this video. Lawsuits from those she tortured and exploited are pending, and she still has a lot to answer for. Not so for Tia Mowry, who's a rather lovely soul with a sickly body. Tia Mowry came to fame by starring opposite her twin sister in Sister Sister, a sitcom like no other. The twins also put their acting talents on display in other movies, and in 1992 released a hit single that made its merry way to number 72 on the Billboard Hot 100. Now back to Tia. She suffers from endometriosis, an incurable disease that affects around 10% of all women of reproductive age on this planet. Tragically, she was only diagnosed after suffering throughout her early 20s, and before her diagnosis and treatment, her peas used to be nightmarish affairs. Endometriosis causes depression, infertility, fatigue, heavy bleeding during periods, nausea, and chronic pelvic pain plus severe pain during intimacy, periods, urination, and bowel movements. The only treatment procedures available consist of managing symptoms. Endometriosis made it super hard for Tia to conceive, but she was able to birth a son and years later, a daughter. The star has always been open about her challenges, detailing in a 2021 Instagram Live discussion how doctors had for years dismissed her intense period pains, till she found one who listened and correctly diagnosed her. Tia then underwent surgeries and, on the recommendation of her doctor, stopped eating dairy, processed foods and refined sugars, and started eating lots of fermented foods and green leafy vegetables. She's also a big fan of yoga and meditation, and says she's been in remission for a decade plus. 
Kristen Crook, on the other hand, has not been relevant for a decade at least. And this is why, bogglers. Kristen, just like Allison Mack, is mostly known for Smallville. She played the part of Superman's love interest and stayed for eight seasons. Kristen Crook has only been in eight movies so far and a total of eight TV shows. That's pretty poor for a talented beauty like her. So what happened? Nexium is what happened. Crook joined the cult to deal with her confidence and shyness issues and left in 2013. She has been assertive about not witnessing any bad deeds during her time in Nexium and says she's horrified by what the FBI uncovered when they arrested Allison Mack and made her sing like a canary. Kristen Crook has not been charged with any crime. Her guilt or innocence does not matter to most, and she's been tarred with the same brush as her Smallville co-star. That makes it extra hard for her to find work in Tinseltown. Selma Blair is also experiencing employment difficulties and would have been living a dream life right now if a certain disease hadn't made a traumatic mess of it. Selma had big roles to play in movies like Brown's Requiem, Cruel Intentions, Legally Blonde, and the Hellboy franchise. And she's a fashionista who's been on the covers and in between the pages of magazines like Vogue, Marie Claire, and Vanity Fair. Now, before August 2018, Selma Blair had for years been dealing with what she thought was a minor illness or perhaps a pinched nerve. It caused such problems as an inability to remember things, keep her balance, hold on to things, and speak. Doctors were initially at a loss to find a cause for all this and told her that the problem was psychological. But by August 2018, they had gathered their wits around them enough to diagnose her with multiple sclerosis, and she went public with the diagnosis the next month. MS is a brain and spinal cord disease that affects the central nervous system. It happens when the immune system goes a bit haywire and wages war on the central nervous system, and that makes it hard for the brain and body to work together as they should. The disease has no known cure, and symptoms can vary from almost non-existent to severe and disabling. Selma Blair has repeatedly spoken about her diagnosis, describing it as a relief, and she bravely detailed her experiences in a memoir published last year. But work offers have dried up for the actress, and for Amy Locaine, too. But then, it is really hard getting offers to star in blockbusters when you're in jail. By the way, make sure you subscribe for more interesting videos. Amy Locaine is now 51, but once upon a time, she was young, beautiful, and alluring. She played the love interest of guys like Johnny Depp and Brendan Fraser in movies like School Ties and Cry Baby. She had steady work all through the 90s and early 2000s, but gave it all up to get married in 2006. Amy then had a couple of kids and kept her acting talent honed by occasionally acting in the local community theater. She lived her life till one day it all came crashing down. That day was June 27, 2010, and both Amy and her hubby attended a party at which alcohol by the vat was available. With her husband nowhere to be found, Amy Locaine decided to drive herself home. But on the way, she scratched a car and, with the owner in hot pursuit, crashed at almost twice the speed limit into another car making a turn. The impact killed the passenger of the automobile and severely injured the driver. Tests later revealed that Amy Locaine had almost three times the legal limit of alcohol in her system. And in December 2010, she was charged with aggravated manslaughter and assault by automobile. In November 2012, she was convicted of assault by auto and vehicular homicide and given three years behind bars. That should have been the end of it, but the family of the dead woman were understandably appalled at what they saw as a slap on the wrist. Appeals resulted in Amy being resentenced to five years behind bars in February 2019, with this being adjusted to eight years behind bars in September 2020. Do you think the resentencing was fair? Let us know in the comments section. Now, let's talk about being clueless. Stacey Dash is mostly known for her work in Clueless, with the movie directly inspiring a sitcom. Did we say something about her being clueless? Well, that's because in late 2022, she posted a video of her crying. Had she suffered a personal tragedy, learned the world was ending tomorrow, or heard that PETA had succeeded in enforcing a permanent ban on meat consumption? No! 
Stacy was crying because September 2022 was when she learned that DMX had been dead for a year plus. But her not being up to date on pop culture is not why she's in this video. Stacy Dash is here because she's, in effect, cancelled in Hollywood. As to why, it all boils down to politics and Stacy being unable to keep her mouth shut. In 2012, she switched political affiliations from the Democratic to the Republican Party and became a vocal critic of President Obama and an ardent supporter of President Trump, which didn't go down all that well in the liberal arena that is Hollywood. Stacy called for the ending of Black History Month, mocked Leonardo DiCaprio's 2016 Oscar acceptance speech, said Al Gore's Oscar-winning An Inconvenient Truth was ridiculous, called fellow actor and human rights activist Jesse Williams a Hollywood plantation slave, said transgender folks should go relieve themselves in bushes, and praised President Trump's comments on the 2017 neo-Nazi rally in Charlottesville. Though she later apologized for all the unpleasant things she had said, the damage had been done, and it remains to be seen if her career and reputation have enough flexibility to fully recover. And speaking of flexibility, Christina Applegate has precious little of that these days, and that's so sad to see. Christina is the star of Married with Children, Jesse, Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy, and Sweet Charity. She also has an incredible seven Primetime Emmy nods and four Golden Globe nominations. Life hasn't always been good and sweet to this blonde beauty. In 2008, news broke out that she had breast cancer, and to take care of that, a double mastectomy was performed. In August 2021, Christina Applegate came to Twitter to announce that a few months before, she had been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, with the illness affecting her ability to put in her best on the set of the third season of Dead to Me. Production of the Netflix dramedy was therefore frozen for five months. MS affects the brain, spinal cord, and optic nerves, and symptoms include paralysis, memory problems, mood changes, numbness, pain, and fatigue. According to Christina Applegate, there were warning signs of the disease like weight gain, tiredness, sleepiness, numbness, and inability to keep her balance that she'd paid no attention to. In November last year, she told Variety that Dead to Me might well be her last appearance on the big screen. We wish Christina the best, with the worst being hopefully reserved for Amber Heard. Here's why. Significant numbers of members of the public have less than warm and fuzzy feelings towards the all the boys love Mandy Lane, drive angry, never back down, machete kills, and Justice League actress. And it's all down to Johnny Depp and how Amber Heard treated that very kind-hearted but self-destructive fella. She and Johnny began a relationship in 2012 and married in 2015, with Amber filing for divorce the next year and accusing him of being physically, verbally, and emotionally abusive. In February 2019, Johnny sued his ex-wife for defamation over a Washington Post article she had written the previous year. In August 2020, she filed a counterclaim and the two faced off in court from April to June 2022. The trial was very public and live-streamed. During the trial, what was said and left unsaid, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp's courtroom behaviors and evidence that was brought forward made it possible for most members of the public to conclude that Johnny had been innocent of what he was accused of. Amber Heard was then seen as a very cold, calculating, and possibly evil woman. The jury felt the same way, too, and decided that she had lied and defamed her ex-husband and should pay him $10 million in compensatory damages and $5 million, later reduced to $350,000 in punitive damages, while Amber Heard was awarded $2 million in compensatory damages. She later settled by forking over $1 million, and the fallout of the trial has been massive, with calls for her movies to be boycotted being particularly strident at some point last year. Anyway, is anyone here with a broken heart? A good dose of Tony Braxton is just what doctors recommended for that, with tremendous effects occurring when her Unbreak My Heart single is played over loudspeakers on a loop. Tony Braxton holds seven Grammys, seven American Music Awards, and nine Billboard Music Awards, and is a superstar several times over. But being famous is never a secure shield against misfortune and the trickeries of fate. 
In 2007, rumors gained ground that the hit singer had breast cancer. Tony denied this, but she did have a benign lump removed from her chest the next year. In November 2010, Tony Braxton told the world via CBS News that she had lupus, an incurable autoimmune disease in which the immune system starts attacking healthy cells, leading to symptoms like tiredness, swollen lymph nodes, hair loss, mouth ulcers, fever, chest pain, and swollen joints. She had been diagnosed in 2008 after showing up in a Las Vegas emergency room with heart attack symptoms, with her doctors being initially unable for years to agree on what was wrong with the star. Once the lupus diagnosis was confirmed, it turned out that the disease had for some reason found her heart to be a place it loved to set up shop in, and that's why she often suffered from pericarditis. Tony was told she needed a heart transplant and would never perform again. But both predictions, thankfully, turned out to be wrong. She has adjusted to her lupus diagnosis by going the plant diet route, exercising regularly and slowing down, and deals with the pain via CBD and hemp skincare products. Health matters apart, Tony Braxton has gone broke in 1998 and 2010 with her obsessive spending habits and twisted music industry financial arrangements to be blamed for the first bankruptcy and illness to be blamed for the second. She's currently worth around $10 million. Do beauty queens suffer broken hearts? We imagine not. The beauty queen in question here is Vanessa Williams, and she won the Miss America crown back in 1984. She parlayed the fame from that win and the notoriety that ensued from her posing in her birthday suit for an adult magazine into a successful singing and acting career, and has received multiple Grammy Awards and Primetime Emmy nods. Vanessa Williams is by every measure an extraordinarily successful woman, and her legacy is assured. So what then is she doing in this 15 actresses who are currently suffering video? Well, she's diabetic, and that for sure is not a thing of joy. Vanessa was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when she was a young adult, and it is an autoimmune disease that happens when the immune system declares all-out war on those cells that make insulin. She has a family history of the disease, and unlike other stars, is not all that outspoken about its effects on her life. The singer and model keeps the disease at bay by doing stuff in moderation, and often donates to charities that are focused on diabetic research. Selena Gomez, in contrast to Vanessa Williams, has been quite open about her lupus diagnosis and all aspects of her life, from the ups caused by career successes to the downs triggered by her paramours breaking her heart. Selena is, of course, one of those famous figures who need no introduction. The former Disney child star recently made history by being the first woman to get 400 million followers on Instagram, and has also broken no less than 16 Guinness World Records. Lupus affected Selena so severely that she had to get a kidney transplant back in 2017, and the surgery was a dicey affair. Lupus apart, Selena suffers from anxiety and depression, and is one of those soft-hearted persons who are easily affected by what social media trolls have to say about her career, weight, appearance, and whatever else. In 2020, she opened up about a bipolar diagnosis and had a major break with reality in 2018. It sure is tough being Selena Gomez, and we wish the Good For You singer the best. And up next is Shannon Richardson, a mother of five who has had very minor roles in The Walking Dead, The Vampire Diaries, and Franklin and Bash. Shannon, like almost everyone else in the movie business, dreamed of making it big. But that didn't happen till she cooked up an elaborate scheme that involved death threats to President Obama, then New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg, and the director of Mayors Against Illegal Guns. See, this lady married thrice and, amid a bitter divorce, thought it would be a good idea to get her third husband in trouble. Did she plant coke in his bag, hit him over the head with a frying pan while he slept, or serve him a dish of rabid rats fried in rancid grease? No, sir, she did not. What she did was call the cops and accuse the fella of having sent threatening letters to folks like Obama and Bloomberg. The husband was quickly arrested, but kept insisting on his innocence with a more detailed investigation uncovering incriminating evidence that resulted in his being released and Shannon Richardson being arrested in June 2013 and charged. 
She pled guilty in December 2013 and in 2014 was sentenced to 18 years behind bars and fined $367,222,000. Shannon could be out by 2028, and let's hope the premise behind The Walking Dead won't become reality by then. And neither should we see a resurrected Tony Soprano crowned the mayor of New Jersey. Tony Soprano from The Sopranos was quite the character. Jamie Lynn Sigler played the part of Meadow Soprano in the iconic show, and that's what she's mostly known for in movie land. But we're not here for a The Sopranos reunion or plot reprisal. Jamie Lynn Sigler has multiple sclerosis, and she was diagnosed when she was 20 years old. That's a truly horrific disease, and we've spoken quite a bit about it. But no words can convey the impact it can have on lives and careers. Back in 2000 and on the set of Campfire Stories, Jamie Lynn experienced a sudden and days-long paralysis that affected her body from the waist down, and this was chalked up to Lyme disease. It later turned out that she'd been misdiagnosed, and that incident was multiple sclerosis doing what it did best, making life extra hard. She was correctly diagnosed in 2002, and the mother of two has since then traveled the world seeking cures or effective treatment options. In a recent podcast, Jamie Lynn said, I've traveled the world. If somebody tells me this is going to heal you, I've gone. I just want to learn how to live with this better. I can't give up. I don't want to give up on life. I have beautiful children. I have my own dreams and aspirations. It's been really hard for a long time. And we come to the fairest of them all, a Bond girl, no less. And who else could it be other than Halle Berry? Hail the introducing Dorothy Dandridge, Monsters Ball, and John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum star. And all ye better tremble before Storm and Catwoman. Now, during the shooting of Living Dolls in 1989, Halle Berry fell into a diabetic coma due to type 1 diabetes. She was 22 then and has fought back by rigorously following a high-fat and low-carb keto diet. In 2018, she made an Instagram post crediting her keto diet with helping her lose weight soon after childbirth and slowing her aging process. She has also said she was able to wean herself off insulin and is currently suffering from type 2 diabetes, which is something that medical experts scoff at. According to them fellas in lab coats, this simple explanation was that Halle Berry had been misdiagnosed and had type 2 diabetes from the get-go. Them medical fellas must be right, too, because type 1 diabetes is incurable and results in the implosion of the part of the pancreas that produces insulin. Thus, for type 1 diabetics to wean themselves off insulin would be as impossible as a chihuahua jumping high enough to bite the moon into two. Type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, can often be reversed with diet changes and weight loss. Did Halle Berry cure herself? Well, we're not about to argue with Storm, an African witch priestess who can change the weather faster than most of us can down a shot of tequila. Click here to see 15 actors currently suffering. See you there.